ഗുരുഭുവ സഹ തവിതോരവരേണിയം ഭൂ ദേവശ്യോ പ്രചോദയ ഓം ശാന്തി 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 നമസ്കാരം മൈ ഡിയർ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ദിസ് ഈസ് വീഡിയോ നമ്പർ തേർട്ടി ഓം ഭഗവാൻ ശ്രീ സത്യ സായി ബാബാസ് ഡിവൈൻ ഡ്രീസ് കോഴ്സ് ഫോർ ദ ഡിവോട്ടീസ് പർസ്യൂയിങ് ദ സാധന ഫോർ ദയർ സെൽഫ് റിയലൈസേഷൻ ലീഡിംഗ് ടു ലിബറേഷൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ സ്റ്റാർട്ട്സ് വിത്ത് ഡിവൈൻ ഡ്രീസ് കോഴ്സ് നമ്പർ ട്വൻറ്റി ടു ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ ഗുഡ് it is a rare in this world to get the company of the good the wicked are a plenty granite stones are everywhere but you have to search for diamonds differences in beliefs and cultural practices among men are well known although climatic conditions may be the same in the various regions of the world the ways of living and practices of people are diverse this diversity is inherent in nature it is not a defect but an ornament this diversity is not to be seen among birds and beasts that's because they do not have the power to think man alone has this capacity whatever one's education position or intelligence every man desire two things he wants to achieve greatness and wishes to be a good man no one wishes to be lowly and despised what is the difference between a great man and a good man greatness is based on worldly attributes the great man is able to attract people The good man tries to sustain himself by his own efforts. The difference between the two has to be clearly recognized. The great man enjoys many luxuries and amenities. He has thus many physical comforts. The good man experiences the bliss of the divine. Greatness has a rajasic quality. Goodness bears a sattvic quality. Good persons should try to develop sattvic qualities. Greatness is often associated with persons who have likes and dislikes, attachments and hatred and who have an inflated ego. Goodness expresses itself in pure joy and unselfish service to others. Dharma, right conduct is like a meter. It reveals to you what is your duty towards your parents, your friends and others. How you discharge your duties will determine how you yourself feel later in life. Four kinds of temples. There are four kinds of temples. One, Vidyalaya, the temple of learning. Second, Bhojanalaya, the temple of food. Third, Vedyalaya, the temple of healing, and Devalaya, the temple of good. All the four are equally places of worship for man. But because of the infirmities in human nature, they are not all treated alike. People go to a Bhojanalaya hotel, eat whatever food they like, and come out happy. They go to a Vedayalaya hospital relate their illness to the doctor and receive the prescribed medicines from him. With this, the purpose of going to the hospital is accomplished. If you ask for e-tables in a hospital, will you get them? In a hospital, you can only ask for medical treatment. When you go to a Vidyalaya, an educational institution, You must seek only knowledge in the subjects you are interested in. When people go to Devalaya, temple of God, they do not always conduct themselves properly. In a temple, you should be concerned only with worship and not think of anything else. 
instead of concentrating the mind on the divine <coughs> the mind is allowed to wander hither and thither and think about useless mundane affairs with the result that people tend to forget if they secure the grace of god all other things will be accomplished easily <coughs> Having come to Prashanti Nilayam, some persons are developing various differences and doubts and forming undesirable associations and contacts, thereby both time and resources are wasted. Time is precious and should be profitably used. Correct your faults and sanctify your life. Education, wealth and strength are necessary for everyone, but the value of each of them depends on the way you use it. When a good man gets the benefit of education, it ripens into wisdom and makes his life an ideal one. But when a bad man gets educated, he gets immersed in disputations and education itself gets polluted. When a good man gets wealth, it is used for charity and righteous causes. He redeems his life by sacrifice. But wealth in the hands of a bad person promotes arrogance and pride and ultimately causes his downfall. Strength in a good man enables him to help the weak and serve the society. Strength in a wicked person encourages him to cause harm to people and harass the weak. Thus education, wealth and physical prowess derive their value from the way they are used. It is only when the individual is transformed and becomes good that society can be changed for the better. Men must engage themselves in a constant process of self-correction instead of seeking to find fault in others. If instead of searching for hundred faults in others, one corrects any one of his own faults, he would be sanctifying his life. Make no room for jealousy and egoism. Before you undertake any activity, you must examine whether it is right or wrong, good or bad. When such an inquiry is being made, Sometimes an evil force enters. It is jealousy. It clouds your vision. This jealousy has an evil companion called Ahankara, egoism. This ego is constantly seeking to dominate the body and the mind. These two evil elements are always seeking to establish themselves, especially in the minds of the young. Every effort must be made to make no room for them. Bhakti, devotion is essential for experiencing ananda, atmic bliss. Bhakti is the source of man's true shakti, power. This power endows man with various abilities. Through this power man can develop ultimately virakti, detachment. When detachment grows, man achieves mukti, liberation. Mukti, liberation is not a special state or object. It is the gradual elimination of all desires, desires arising from kama, lust, krodha, anger, and lobha, greed, have to be reduced as much as possible. Students should make special efforts to get rid of these three evil qualities. They must widen their vision and develop the spirit of oneness with all living beings. This may not be easy to realize, but through steady practice and spiritual discipline it can be achieved. D this discourse was made on the Prashanti Mandir, 7th August 1988. Like underground water, the divine is there in everyone. Remember, the Lord is Sarva Bhuta Antaratma, Sarva Yapi. He is the Atma of everything. He is in you as much as in everyone else. 
he is not more in a rich being or bigger in a fat being. His spark illumines the cave of heart of everyone. The sun shines equally on all. His grace is falling equally on all. It is only you that erect obstacles that prevent the rays of His grace from warming you. Discourse number 23 The Divine and the Devotee <clears throat> Bhagwan had slept in his bathroom early in the morning on Saturday, August 20, and an X ray picture taken by the doctors revealed a fracture in the hip bone. Although the doctors had advised four weeks of complete bad rest, Swami declared that he needed no rest and would carry on his work. Swami, however, had to refrain from giving the usual darshan for the next few days. On the morning of the 26th, the Onam program began with Vedic chants and folk dances by students of the Sri Salem Vidya Vihar. The student's band greeted Bhagwan when he gave darshan from the balcony of the Prasanthi Mandir to the inexpressible delight of the thousands of devotees who had gathered in the Mandir compound. Hundreds of overseas devotees were also present. Beginning his discourse with a call to men to realize their inherent divinity, Bhagwan devoted a good part of his discourse to an account of what happened to him on Saturday and cleared all the doubts and apprehensions felt by the devotees regarding his ailment. The entire gathering heard with rapt attention Swami's memorable discourse, which provided not only new insights into his avataric mission but revealed to them how they should overcome the ills which flesh is here too. Bhagwan the discourse delivered on the occasion is given below. Even the divine has to submit to nature's laws. <clears throat> the laws governing nature were made by God and everyone is subject to them. Whether he is a millionaire or a pauper, the earth has its power of attraction. If a man sleeps, he is bound to fall and may get hurt. The body is subject to the laws of nature. When anything happens in the course of nature, the divine can face it by self-control. The ordinary devotee cannot do so. Various rumors and conjunctures were going round among devotees after I could not give darshan for four days from Saturday. It was my usual practice to bolt my room after giving namaskars to devotees at night. In the morning after finishing my ablutions, I would open the door. On Saturday morning, I slipped on a piece of soap in the bathroom and fell on my back. The injury I sustained was a natural consequence of the fall, as natural as heat generated by the fire. Whoever sustains a fall, whether it is a Swami or anybody else, will suffer from the consequent injury. Even the Divine has to submit himself to his own laws governing nature. In this process, occasional mishaps may occur. When I slipped and fell, the hip bone had been affected by my willpower. I got up and opened the room. Then Radha Krishna, my attendant, and the doctors came. There was no need for the doctor to see me. I have to control whatever happens to me. This is my example to the world. Pain is mitigated by the diverting the mind. Pain is mitigated by diverting the mind. This kind of equanimity cannot be felt by anyone except the Divine. There is nothing beyond the power of the Divine. Although, although there was excruciating pain on account of the injury through self-control, 
my mind did not think about it if the mind had been dwelling on the pain the pain would have been greater the best medicine for the pain is diverting the mind every time the body turned there was a kind of shock the pain would have been greater the best medicine for the pain is diverting the mind every time the body turned there was a kind of shock i was wholly engaged in reading the numerous letters from the devotees and was oblivious to the state of the body why should not swami cure himself i was not as selfish as that when others are injured do i relieve them immediately everything has a time factor one has to put up with a with it for duration of the trouble the pain can be mitigated by prayer and by diverting the mind the body is subject to ailment from time to time it comes and goes if i rid myself of any ail ailments instantaneously people may comment what a selfish person is sai baba he cures his illness immediately but he does not remove the pain of others whether it is your bodily ailment or somebody else's <laughs> attempts can be made to treat it to teach the sufferer how to control the mind and strengthen the power of resistance but it cannot be got rid of the same instant the time required for healing has to be allowed during the past four days my mind did not bother about the injury i did not give up any of my normal activities i did not come out only because of the entreaties of devotees my devotee joy is my joy sometimes i take on the ailments of the others i do this for my own delight and not out of any external pressure but in every case of illness control of the mind is needed to bear with it this is what every one of you should bear in mind this is the message of my life i am exercising various kinds of self control to serve as an example to you my love and kindness for the devotees were there in abundance otherwise i would not have stayed on when the doctors were keen to take me to bangalore when thousands of devotees from kerala are coming here it is impossible for me to go away i will not go the joy of devotees is my joy i have no exclusive joy of my own i have no such desire why should i be concerned about this body you must take care you must take note of this important fact this body is not mine it is yours and therefore i have no concern with it your bodies are mine do not give room in any circumstance at any time for apprehensions about what may be false swami nothing can do me any harm occasionally there may be troubles which are incidentally to the nature of the body but these are passing clouds if you realize the true nature of divinity you will not feel that swami is experiencing great pain and that he should take some medicine out of their love for swami devotees are appealing to swami to take rest but i do not need any rest karmanya adhikaraste you are entitled to do only your duty that's my message to you although i have been told by doctors not to move i get up at 5 in the morning attend to my ablutions and take my bath as usual all of you should forget your troubles and try to be as happy as possible rest assured that swami has no troubles and no harm can come to him ills of the body come and go nothing can harm swami as 
I fell my head hit the mosaic floor with a thud. Dr. Krishnamurti wanted to have my head x-rayed. I told him, no one can know my head has been injured. There is no need for x-raying it. My only sadness is that I have not been able to give joy to my devotees. When you know that Swami has the capacity to control anything, why do you think that I am suffering? You think only about Swami's pain in relation to the body, but do not think about the Atma. You must have the firm conviction that nothing can harm Swami. Concentrate on Nama Samarna, constant remembrance of the name of the Lord. There is no use in doing japa and meditation for the sake of Swami. It appears artificial. What you have to bear in mind is that no trouble can affect Swami now or in the future and that everything is part of my play. Such things happen to the Divine. They come and go. I take no account of them. Here is another example of how the Divine works. The fact that I have been standing here for such a long time is itself a miracle. The legs have been strained to the limit. There has been considerable pain, but in the joy of addressing you, I am unaware of the pain. There has been I likewise in all the troubles and sufferings you must turn the mind away from them. It is to teach you this lesson that I chose to speak to you today. At all times and in all situations, recite the name of the Lord with devotion. Live in the harmony and love with everyone. The Lord's name is sweeter than nectar. Let the Lord's name dance on your tongue. Do not have any anxiety on my account. The devotees from Kerala, though they have missed Swami's darshan on three days, should not suffer any pain on my account. They should think that whatever has happened is for their good. Discourse at Purna Chandra Auditorium, 26 August 1988 if you have the grace of God, no Graham can harm you. Maleficent influences even from the most powerful combination of planets with which the astrologer terrify you will disappear in a trice. So I end this video here. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot. Namaskar my dear friends.